While the world speeds into electric vehicles, there remains a stubborn few who refuse to give up on the internal combustion engine. Not because they're idiots stuck in the past, but because they see potential where others see option lessons. Among them is Gary Wacy, whose creation, the Wacy engine, is one of the most intriguing and technically clever reinventions of the piston engines in recent decades. Now, if you thought all piston engines were variations on the same tired old crankshaft and connecting rod dance, Wacy's invention will rattle your assumptions. He's turned the fundamental mechanism of converting linear piston motion into rotary crank motion on its head. Literally, the result, an engine that could be lighter, more efficient, and less friction riddled than anything conventional, yet still compatible with existing manufacturing technology. And this engine is not some BS clickbait motor that is just made for views on YouTube. This thing actually runs. But to appreciate what Wacy is doing, we first need to revisit the classic internal combustion engine design. Since the dawn of the automotive age, engineers have wrestled with the inherent inefficiency and mechanical complexity of the crankshaft and connecting rod system. The piston moves up and down in a cylinder, but this linear motion must be converted into rotational motion to turn the wheels. Their solution has always been the connecting rod, a metal arm linking the piston to the crankshaft offset to translate up and down piston travel into rotation. Sounds simple enough, but it introduces a big problem, lateral forces. When the piston is pushed down by combustion, the connecting rod doesn't move strictly vertically. It tilts the piston sideways against the cylinder walls, causing friction, wear and energy loss. This is why piston rings and cylinder walls wear out and why engines need oil and regular maintenance. More moving parts also mean more weight, complexity and potential failure points. The crankshaft itself is heavy and requires precise balancing and the connecting rods are under immense stress, often limiting engine speed and efficiency. So how do you solve this? Well, with Gary Wacy's eccentric disc engine. You see his concept flips the old formula on its head. Instead of a crankshaft with rods, Wacy designed a large disc mounted eccentrically on a main shaft or off-center. The pistons push directly on the edge of this disc. By doing so, the piston's linear motion turns the disc, which then rotates the main shaft. This means no connecting rods, no offset crank throws, and importantly, no sideways force pushing the piston against the cylinder walls. This setup has several consequences. First, the piston moves perfectly parallel inside the cylinders, eliminating the side loads and the friction they cause. That alone promises reduced wear and improved efficiency. Secondly, the engine loses the heavy crankshaft and connecting rods, shaving weight and complexity. Third, because the pistons are connected to a ring-like bearing surface, rather than a crank pin, Wacy could design the engine to maintain excellent lubrication and reduce friction even further. Now, the prototype Wacy engine is a horizontally opposed twin cylinder a layout familiar to fans of flat twins or boxer engines found in some Porsches and Subarus. The two pistons are linked and move together pushing on opposite sides of the eccentric disc. As one piston moves inward on its combustion stroke, the other piston moves outward on its exhaust stroke, balancing the forces across the disc. This synchronized motion maintains smooth rotational power, delivery and limits vibration. A critical point since excessive vibration is a big problem with some unconventional engines. The link pistons push on a bearing ring surrounding the eccentric disc. The bearing ring doesn't rotate but slides on the disc's top surface, acting like a giant low friction interface between the pistons and the rotating disc. The ring bears the brunt of the force, allowing for improved durability. Anyways, Wazy's genius also shows in how he tackled friction, one of the biggest enemies of efficiency. You see in early versions, the bearing ring was perfectly circular and slid under hydrodynamic lubrication, where a thin layer of oil separates moving surfaces, reducing metal to metal contact. 
However, the interface between the outer edge of the ring and the pistons was generating unexpected friction. To solve this, Wacy flattened or convexed the contacting surfaces, creating a hydrodynamic wedge, a tiny self-sustaining oil film that separates metal parts under pressure. Just like in high-performance crankshaft journals, this reduced friction on the outer ring piston interfaced to levels comparable to those in the main journals of conventional crankshafts. The result, a friction profile dramatically lower than typical reciprocating engines. The pistons do not tilt or rock against cylinder walls, and the bearing ring shares the load evenly, reducing wear and improving longevity. But what makes the Wacy engine even more remarkable is that it isn't some lab oddity made from space-age materials or 3D printed parts. The prototype uses off-the-shelf Honda cylinder barrels and heads made it to the Wacy eccentric disc and bearing ring system. This means the engine is not just theoretically superior, it's practical. Honda engineers even took interest when they saw the prototype, sending photos back to their headquarters in Japan. Ford, GM and Chinese automakers have also expressed curiosity. The engine's design fits neatly within current manufacturing and assembly processes, which is vital if the engine is ever to scale beyond a garage. Currently, the engine weighs around 175 pounds and displaces 677 cc, which is small, light and capable of revving past 10,000 rpm. The team estimates it could produce around 80 horsepower. For context, that's an impressive specific output, especially from such a small, simple engine. But I know some people will say, my CBR 600RR makes more power out of a smaller engine. But remember, this is a proof of concept, not a high-performance race engine. It was built to show that this idea works, not built to power a superbike. But while it's too early to say whether the Wacy engine will revolutionize automotive powertrains, its compact size, efficiency gains, and reduced complexity make it an ideal candidate as a hybrid range extender. Picture a small, lightweight gasoline generator on the back of an EV, spinning up quickly to top off the batteries or to power the car on long trips. Gary Wacy's vision isn't limited to mainstream cars either. He considered fitting the engine into a vintage VW Beetle or even a dune buggy. With a fraction of the weight and complexity of a traditional flat 4 air cooled engine, the Wacy engine could deliver surprising performance and economy in classic or niche vehicles. But as I know, I will get some comments asking why waste time on stuff like this when electric vehicles is the answer. Well, for me, I like engines, they are character, they are all different, and they speak to you. But for Wacy, he argues that electric vehicles aren't a perfect environmental solution. There are massive energy costs in mining minerals, battery production, and disposal. Meanwhile, internal combustion engines can still evolve and improve. Hybrid solutions combining efficient, clean piston engines with electric motors may well dominate the automotive landscape for decades. Plus, Wacy sees promise in alternative fuels, including hydrogen, that could run in such an engines with fewer emissions and better efficiency. But no invention is without its hurdles. Wacy's engine still needs dyno testing to verify power and emission claims. It must pass stringent modern regulations if it is ever to be sold commercially. Durability testing, manufacturing scale-up and real-world refinement also remain to be done. More than that, Wacy operates on a shoestring budget, a two-man operation funded largely by their own pockets. Yet, despite limited resources, they've reached what Wacy calls version 1.999, repeating, which just shows that this is their baby, their passion project. But to end this video off, the Wacy engine isn't a flashy headline-grabbing concept like a Tesla or a Ramac hypercar. It's a quiet, thoughtful rethink of a 130-year-old machine. It's not about tearing up the rulebook, but rewriting it to reduce friction, weight, and complexity while boosting efficiency.
If there's one thing this story teaches us, it's that innovation doesn't always come from giant companies or headline-grabbing startups. Sometimes it comes from a determined engineer with a sketchpad, a physics lesson, and a stubborn refusal to accept the status quo. But at the end of this video, please let me know what's your thoughts on the Wacy engine. I think it's cool. I love all sorts of weird engines um, and I make tons of videos on them. Unfortunately, most of these new weird engines are all just BS, not real stuff, just concepts on a computer. But this one's real, so at least there's that and that's good. So now I think we just have to wait and see what's the next step. Um, does it pass all of the tests? Uh, is, the, is the engine scalable, all of that stuff. Only time will tell, so I have to wait and see. But yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Now, if you guys did like this video, you'll most probably enjoy most of my other stuff. So just go through my channel, see if there's someone else like. I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, I.